Hey guys, it's Trina and this is my monthly recommendations video for May. Monthly recommendations is a Goodreads group that was created by myself and my friend Kayla Rain. May's topic is contemporary, which is a pretty broad genre. We've been wanting to do it for a while and we thought it was very fitting for the spring and summer months. I want to kind of take this opportunity to just talk about my personal favorite contemporary books. My first contemporary series that I want to talk about is the Anna and the French Kiss series by Stephanie Perkins. Although I do have some mixed opinions on some of the things that occurred in these books, I just remember that I did not want to read this book. I thought it was going to just be so bad. And then I finally picked it up and I just blew through it. Like it was one of those read it in one night kind of books for me. So I had a really fun experience with that first book and then I ended up enjoying books two and three a lot more. So if you aren't familiar with the series, these are three different companion novels so each one does follow a new character. If you're looking for books to just kind of breeze through really easily and if fluffy romantic contemporary is your thing, I definitely think that this series is a really good kind of standby series to meet that fluffy romantic contemporary vibe. The third book, Isla and the Happily Ever After, is definitely my favorite of the series because I felt so much more connected to that relationship than I did to the first two. Whereas the other two books just showed the swoony romantic build-up to getting together, Isla actually showed a relationship in progress and I just really appreciated it for that. So I definitely love this series, but specifically it's Isla and the Happily Ever After out of this series that is my favorite. Next I want to talk about the Burn for Burn trilogy by Jenny Han and Siobhan Vivian. This is a revenge story. It's following three high school girls from completely different cliques who have all been burned and hurt by the popular guy in school. So these three girls all kind of band together and keep their friendship a secret and they're plotting revenge to get back at this guy who is like ruining their lives. And I'm just a sucker for a good revenge story and I also enjoyed watching these friendships develop because none of these girls have a lot in common except for their desire for revenge and then the revenge plot kind of goes off of its tracks at times and they get in way over their heads. I thought it was fun. So if you like revenge stories and you're more in the mood for that as opposed to something very fluffy, although there is some romance in that series too, then I would recommend the Burn for Burn trilogy. Next up is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, which I know is a standby for like everybody. The reasons why I love this book is because for first of all, it's set in college. And I think at the time that I had read this, which was years ago by the way, I think I hadn't really read any books that were set in college and I just found this time of life to be so much more relatable to me. But I also had an extreme connection to the main character, Kath, because she does have social anxiety. And again, I don't think I had ever read a book at that time of a character that had anxiety, and I saw so much of myself in her. I also really enjoyed the romance, the friendships, the sister relationship, the family dynamic in this book, and it is definitely a book that when someone says, hey, what's some of your favorite contemporaries, this one always comes to mind because of that connection I've had with it. Next up is one of those grittier, more hard-hitting books, and that is The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. It's one of my favorite contemporaries because this book is so real. If you don't know, this is a rape revenge story and it is just tackling rape culture. That's the entire purpose of the book. Now because this is dealing with rape culture, you are going to have some scenes in this book that do depict attempted rapes and just some really horrible stuff like there's murders and stuff that happen in this book because of that revenge aspect too. But on the other side, I think that this book is approaching it in an informative and a healing way. It's not doing these things just for shock value, just to like get a reaction out of you. It's really an examination of them. So I do think it is a healthy examination. I also enjoyed the friendships in this book and the family of one of the main characters, PK. Like her parents were just so supportive and I just think that this is a healthy conversation starter that we really need to have in YA. So I really love this book. It is a favorite contemporary of mine. Next is The Girl Who Fell by S.M. Parker which is a really dark book because this one is examining an inside look at an abusive romance. So we're following a girl who meets a new guy, she falls for him, and then slowly but surely the reader starts seeing that this is an abusive relationship. So it's a very terrifying type of novel. It's definitely not a feel-good book. You're gonna hate it, but that's the point. And as someone who has been in an abusive relationship, I actually loved this book. This is the best examination of an abusive relationship that I have ever read about in a book. This book just offered a really well-rounded look at all the things that might happen in a relationship like this. It offered me a mirror yet again, and I just 
felt very empowered by this story and I'm really really glad that we have stories like this that exist in YA because I think more teenagers need to be seeing examples like this so that they will kind of recognize some of the warning signs. At least I wish I had when I was a teenager. Next is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I just read this a couple months ago and it's my favorite book that I've read so far this year. Like it really is that good. It follows a black teenager named Star who witnesses one of her friends being shot by a white policeman and just kind of like the repercussions of this and the media coverage of it and how it wants to paint her black teenage friend as just a thug and a hoodlum and you know he's a drug dealer and they're just slandering him and they're trying to make the white policeman out to be like he was scared for his life even though the guy was not doing anything threatening at all. Aside from it tackling a very important issue, this book was just amazingly well written as well. Angie Thomas wrote so many different tones, so many different scenes in this book. She transitioned between them flawlessly. The characterization was amazing. The relationships between Star and her friendships and her family and the community, everything was just written so well. It was such a real story and Star is such a real character. I just loved everything about this book so it is definitely one of my favorite contemporary stories. Next is If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo which is a book about a trans girl and her experience. She has already transitioned and she's at a new school. She just moved in with her father where she previously was living with her mother and this book is amazing at examining again family dynamics. I feel like that's probably a theme in why I'm liking a lot of these books because like, I keep saying I love the family dynamics in this book but I loved the family exploration in this book. This one is own voices and I just think that there is a lot of value in it. There's a really cute romance in it. There are some good friendships although some of the friendships I felt like weren't the best but the story itself and the characters were really really great and it's definitely worth mentioning because every time we think of amazing contemporary stories this one definitely does come to mind. Next is In Real Life by Jennifer Love. It is about two characters who know each other online. One of them has a crush on the other. She decides to go out and meet him in real life for the first time ever and tell him about her crush. And when she gets there, she realizes that he hasn't been completely truthful about everything in his life. Now, I have recommended this to a few friends, and they say that they hate the tropes that are in it. And I do see that there definitely are a few tropes that are pretty heavy in it. But when I read it, I felt like this book flipped all those tropes on their heads. Like it was actively trying to subvert them because it would like start going down this one path and then the characters would be like, well, why are we really doing that? And I just really enjoyed it. This one to me was just like a feel good, happy making book. So if you're looking for a book that's just going to be really easy to fly through and it's just going to make you feel happy, this one did that for me. So I still think it's definitely worth recommending. Another favorite is Just One Day by Gail Foreman. This is about a young girl who is on a college trip in London and then she meets a guy there and they decide that they're going to take a train and go to Paris for just one day to spend it together. She's never really taken a risk like that so she just goes for it and they spend this wonderful day together in Paris and then she wakes up the next morning and he's gone and she has no idea what's happened to him. The story follows her as she tries to piece together this mystery of what really happened during that day and how that day has changed her life. So this book does not all take place from start to finish in just one day. That's about maybe the first third of the book and then the rest of the book examines her life in like the following year after that. And when I read this book, this is another one that just had a really deep personal meaning for me because this character is a person that's struggling to move on from a relationship that she doesn't know why it ended. She needs closure and I had had a relationship like years and years ago when I read this book and I never got any closure from it and when I read this I was like oh my gosh this is a piece of my life. Like obviously I didn't go to Paris but when I read this book I remember feeling like it was medicine. And this book again is one that was set in college and it does explore things like family and depression and pressure that's put on you for school and I just related to so many aspects of this character and I mean I know a lot of people have said that they don't like this book but when I read it it meant everything to me. I haven't reread it since then. I probably should but I don't want to like ruin that first impression that I had of it, you know, like it just meant so much to me and I just want it to continue meaning that much to me. So this is definitely one of my favorites. Next is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli, which is about a young boy who is gay and he is not out to his friends or his family, but he is in an online relationship with another boy at his school who's also gay and is also not out. 
So the two of them don't know their real identities since they aren't out, and our main character Simon really wants a boyfriend. He really wants to find out who his online crush is. This is another one of those books that is just so happy making. If you're looking for something that'll make you gush and swoon, this is definitely it. There are some heart-wrenching moments that just make your heart drop like, oh, I can't believe that just happened. But overall, this is just a swoony story that I love it so, so much. I just loved it. I loved it. I loved it. If you have a recommendation for a contemporary novel that you think I would enjoy, let me know that down below too, or just tell me what one of your favorite contemporary books is. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the comments. Bye!